Happy, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Live Coffee Talk Show. I'm Michelle Quay. I'm a confidence and leadership coach. And there's over the years, I change a lot of how I am serving and whom I am serving to. So I changed from ne saying negative self talker. And nowadays, I'm more leaning towards uh, I support those who have a lot of internal narratives. So I keep changing. And today is a topic all about change. And I'm sure this is a word that you're very familiar with. In 2020, everything is evolving around change. So I'm really, really honored and happy that my fellow coach and a really good friend of mine, Roseanne, Roseanne at a, a sem, I'm gonna totally kill this name. <laughs> Assembre. Assembre. <laughs> See, I totally brutally killed this name, this last name. All right, I'm gonna have to make up to her. <laughs> all good, all good. She's a change agent coach, Six Sigma Black Belt, change management and continuous improvement consultant and energy leadership index master practitioner from the corporate and management consulting arena where she's worked both domestically and internationally in an adverse set of industries. She provides coaching to change agents. In a minute, we'll learn what, the, what is change agents in one-on-one -on -one and group setting to help them identify and remove the roadblocks to their success, gain support with their change effort and improve their effectiveness. Roseanne also provide consulting and facilitation to organization to help them save time, money and increase cross, cross functional collaboration. She is passionate about continuous improvement, whether it is in an organization or on one's own personal development. So without further ado, and please join me with a warm welcome, Roseanne Assam Assambre. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming, coming on to the show. How do you pronounce your last name? Assambre. Assambre. Yeah, See, don't worry, it's a mouthful. So <laughs> well, thank you for being here. So, you know, every one of us have experienced a lot of change. Tell us about your journey. Sure. So I'm, the journey I'm going to start talking about is kind of how I came into this kind of work. And then I'm going to later on talk a bit about my journey from a personal change perspective, because I know you're interested in some of the biggest challenges I've had along this journey. So we'll get into that as well. So from a how I came into this line of work perspective, I followed what I was passionate about. So when I went to college, I didn't know there was such a thing as continuous improvement work or process improvement work and change management. Didn't know those things existed. And about a year after being out of college and being in, in corporate, I realized I have a natural tendency to want to improve things, whether it's a process that's not working, whether it was a team not working well together or whatever it happened to be in the organization. I just had a natural tendency to want to fix it and help improve it. So <clears throat> I started figuring that out about myself and I ended up going to the West Coast and working for a company called North of Grumman and they were looking for Six Sigma green belts to be trained up. And I was like, what is this? And I went and learned about it and I'm like, oh my God, it is a whole methodology around continuous improvement. I'm like, wow, this is, this is great. This is what I really like to do. So asked to be trained up, was accepted. And then I found out they were looking for Six Sigma black belts, which is the next level up where you actually start um, being able to teach it to some green belts. And I thought, well, I'm new to the organization. I don't know if they'll let me in, but I asked and they did. So I got trained up as a Six Sigma black belt. So that was great. And then that year I'm on a flight and I bump into a management consultant, which I'd never heard of before, and learned about what they do. And basically their whole firm is about going in and helping companies continuously improve. And once again, I was like, wow, there's a whole company focused on this. 
<laughs> so it was very much this learning process and, you know, kind of following it. So I took that in the back of my mind going, ooh, that's interesting. And later when I moved to Boston and I was looking for my next opportunity, I brought in my search to include management consulting firms and came across this firm that had a director of a business technology group. And I thought, all right, well, that's kind of the, the intersection I tend to be in. So reached out to him and was asked to come in for an interview and got hired. And working at the consulting firm was a great learning experience. It was like getting a master's in change management and process improvement and implementation. And the firm was really great at teaching us best practices for whatever process or area we're working in in the company. Where it wasn't as effective is they weren't so time and again, we're on a project and we're providing recommendations to that organization on how to improve and we're explaining the why behind them. Sometimes the leaders take those recommendations and sometimes they don't. And the latter is more about internal blocks that those leaders and executives have around making those changes. And the firm wasn't as great about teaching us how to overcome those internal blocks. So I'm watching that going, okay, well, how do we deal with this aspect? Now, later on, when I decided I wanna move on from the consulting firm, I'm trying to figure out what's next, heard about a coaching program, went to the open house, and lo and behold, they start talking about this is all about helping people overcome those internal blocks to achieve their goals. And the light bulbs went off and I went, oh my God, this is the piece that I was missing at the consulting firm. And how powerful of a change agent can you be if you have both the consulting side and understand the best practices, as well as that coaching toolbox to be able to help remove those internal blocks. And that's when I decided to become a coach and how that whole journey came about. It, it sounds amazing. And, you know, as you're describing your journey, so in March, before this, all these uh, pandemic change happened, I actually did a two-day workshop with Northrop Grotman. Oh, too <laughs> so funny. Brought, yeah, so you brought it up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know, where, I know what they're about. <laughs> and yep. I couldn't share... And because they're such a big company, big corporate, you know, I couldn't share a lot of these, uh, you know, workshop pictures, information without their consent. Yes. So I was so bummed about it because it was such a big thing for me, you know, a big change for me. And so at that time when the lockdown happened, oh my gosh, it was the biggest you know, emotional challenge that I was going through. <laughs> of course, understandable. You had that emotional letdown and frustration. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yes. I had all these pictures, nice graphic, you know, on the oh. delivering a workshop, two days workshop, all that, all planned out, but the pandemic happened. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, you know, as you're going through your journey, what, what were the, some of the biggest challenge or maybe one, the biggest challenge that you have noticed through, on, on that journey? Yeah. So I'm actually going to talk about more in my personal life as far as the biggest challenge. And I think it's one that I think a lot of people in 2020 can relate to. So one of the challenges that I've had on my journey is I have had three major pillar stressors go out on me all at the same time, not once, not twice, but three times over my lifetime. <laughs> three, three is a charm. <laughs> uh, three is a charm, apparently. So basically, when change happens in my life, it's on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I mean by a pillar stressor? So a pillar stressor is the foundational elements of a person's life. So it would be things like losing your job. It would be things like moving from a you know, home, um, losing your relationship, you know, your spouse, um, losing a death of a loved one, a health crisis. So it's those foundational elements that we all kind of rely on to be able to do what we need to do out in the world on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first time I had three major pillar stressors go out on me, um, I was a year out of college. 
I had broken up with my boyfriend that I was living with and I'd been with for over five years. Five days later, I was laid off from my job because it was the start of the dot-com bust. And then about three months later, I moved entirely across the country to California where I only knew two people and they were in different locations and both were two to three hours away from me. So that was a tremendous <laughs> amount of change. You had all three happening. <laughs> I had all three happening in a very, very short time period. Now, most people have a hard enough time with one pillar stressor going, understandably so, right? Our foundation is our foundation for a reason. When three pillar stressors go at the same time, most people are brought down to their knees. And the first time it happened to me, it absolutely brought me down to my knees. The second time it happened, it was six years later. It was still pretty hard and it was better than the first time around. And then the third time it happened to me was 11 years later. And I'm happy to report that round was much easier after having go through, through it two times. Not that I recommend anybody do this. <laughs> But if you have to go through it, it does get easier. It get easier. <laughs> it does get easier. And I learned a lot of things from those experiences, especially the first one. So if you don't mind, is it okay if I share some of those? Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Take it away. So the first thing I had to learn about depression, like that was not something that was talked about in my household growing up or talked in my, my social circles at all. So I had no understanding of it, you know, to even recognize the signs of it, et cetera. So that was one thing that I got a big education about kind of the hard way. The second thing I learned is having a good support system is vital. So that was the second thing. The third thing was there's only so much stress a person can take at the same time and it's okay to ask for help. <laughs> <laughs> because again, where my upbringing was, it was like, you have to be the strong one and you have to figure this out. And, and yeah, sometimes you just need to ask for help. Yeah. So that was the third thing. The fourth yeah. thing was how important stress management is. Again, that was something that wasn't talked about in our household growing up or modeled. So that was something I had to kind of learn from scratch. Um, I learned how important it is to be connecting with people and how important self-care is, you know, getting enough sleep and all of that kind of thing. So it, it was a tremendous life learning experience. I, I remember before we jump onto this, this call, this interview, I was uh, thinking back how we connected. And I remember it was like, I think it's been over a year now that we mm -hmm. last connected. <clears throat> and I remember I was reaching out and looking for people to come into a group. And, and I wanted to have a group where, you know, where, where we have each other's back. And I, I remember when I first started out as a new business owner, I was struggling. There's a lot of emotional challenges yeah. that I can openly share with everyone on my Facebook and say, hey, you know, I'm struggling this month because I don't, I have zero client. And that was not something that I can just tell everybody. So I wanted to make sure that I had a group of people who can resonate with me, who can support each other and moving forward. And you were the first person to jump on that. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we were both looking to build that support system. <laughs> right. And, and it's been a, a really a tremendous amount of support and love and just coming from you. It, it builds up my own confidence that, oh, you know, if I reach out, there is a there is support group that I can go to. I can I can build, I can create together and we can actually do things together. Yes, mm -hmm. and the feeling's absolutely mutual. So yes, absolutely. And that that's that's what support does, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it helps you feel no longer alone. It helps you build that confidence back up in yourself. So it really, really is an important aspect. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious because in, in your bio, there there's the word the change agent. Yeah. What, what is change agent? 
Yeah, so good question. So a change agent is anybody whose job entails changing how people work, changing the systems they're working on, changing the processes they're using at their company, or changing the behaviors or the culture that's happening in an organization. So anyone who's working to shift those things in an organization or even their home, they're a change agent. Now they may not know it, but <laughs> they are absolutely a change agent. And so some examples of what these roles would be called in an organization or a corporate arena. So they have different titles depending on the company. So I can't just give you one, but just to give you some examples. So definitely consultants are change agents. They're definitely you know, looking to shift and improve things for organizations. Product owners on the IT or system side, those are the people that are you know, doing the vision for the changing of the systems and, and working with the business on how that's gonna work. So they are definitely change agents, continuous improvement consultants, Six Sigma Green Belts, environmental champions. So they all, there's a bunch of different titles out there, but those are just some examples. Mm -hmm. I, I can also think of one, one more. Um, so there's a lot of mom or new, newly new mom on my, on my audience, in my audience, in my Facebook. And I can, I can see them listening to this episode and they're thinking, well, I'm a change agent. You know, I change diaper every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a change changing. agent. I'm, I'm a they're, pro at changing. <laughs> they're not only changing diapers every day, but they're honestly changing the behaviors of their kids or they're trying to change behaviors of their kids. So in that aspect, they are absolutely change agents of, of their, you know, children's development. Absolutely. And I think that's a, it's a concept that a lot of people aren't able to understand initially, because when I first heard change agent, I would think, oh, someone must be like really powerful on the top. They must be someone who's like in the leadership role or management role. They're the one who, who can actually make things happen. Um, this is not a clean podcast. So, you know, um, you know, they're the one who's making shit happen. <laughs> <laughs> so for me to think of myself or, you know, any, any of the listener or viewer who's watching this, um, they might not think that they are someone who's capable of that change or making that change for others. Yeah. yeah. And so it's sometimes the people at the top that are making that change. A lot of times it's people in the middle or even people on the ground that are the change agents. So a lot of times the leader is setting the vision within the organization. And mind you, they're doing that for several areas of the business. So it's other roles that tend to be the change agent on the ground that's actually having the hard conversations and sending out those communications on what the changes are going to be. So a lot of it is really under, you know, having emotional intelligence and understanding how changes are going to impact the people that they're going to affect, what those people need in order to overcome any resistance to that change. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is working with people and understanding people and what's gonna be most effective at getting that change to be successful through the organization. There's that aspect and then there's planning aspect and being really good at you know, anticipating all of those various needs and, and the actions that are gonna be taken in order to make that successful. Mm -hmm. what, what have you noticed has been the biggest struggle um, with, the, with the clients that you've been working with? So it really depends on the client. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you say clients, I actually have two different sides of my business. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. So my business is called Sustainable Solutions Coaching and Consulting. And so there is a coaching arm and then there is a consulting arm. So I'll talk about the consulting side first. So the consulting side um, that is going to be organizations that would be bringing me in to help get down to root cause and actually solve the problem for good. So a lot of organizations, unfortunately, the people are focused on solving symptoms of the issue, and that might work initially, but if it's just a symptom, the root cause is going to happen again, and then the issue is going to reoccur, and so you end up in a whack-a-mole situation, and 
it's much easier to go in, identify root cause and solve it once. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's that aspect that can be a challenge in those organizations is they're chasing solving the symptom instead of the root cause. That's one thing. The second thing is if they don't have experts in change management in-house or people who have been through a lot of change or transformations, they might not know the best practices or the lessons learned to smooth out that change or transformation journey that their organization is about to embark or they are embarking on. So if they don't have the right resources or skills in house to be able to do that, what ends up happening is they have a pretty bumpy transformation and change journey. And sometimes it stops and it's unsuccessful or a lot of people get really frustrated during the process. And you know, at some point, if you get them too frustrated, they're not gonna buy in at all. So it can be a very rough journey sometimes. So that might be another avenue where I come in and help smooth that out. Another area challenge that I've seen in organizations a lot is communication really is key. And the amount of miscommunication that happens in organizations. So think about your family and how much miscommunication happens in just that family unit. The same happens in organizations. So a lot of times issues are going on or, or because of a misunderstanding or, you know, an assumption that somebody made that actually may be untrue. So sometimes it's just going in and, you know, kind of unraveling that ball of yarn <laughs> that has become the conflict and identifying where that miscommunication happened and clearing up that communication and aligning everybody so that everything is clear can resolve that conflict and move forward. So those are kind of the areas that um, are some main things that I see in, in those organizations. You know, I also do training and workshops if they just don't have the knowledge or they want to improve skills around these kinds of things of change management, process improvement, et cetera. So it might just be they don't have the, the training. So it might be that as well. But those are the main areas on the consulting side. Mm -hmm. On the coaching side, that's more for the individual change agent and helping them be more effective as the change agent in their organization or their role as a change agent. So there it's going to be more an internal struggle that they're having. So it could be confidence issues. You know, if they're new to the role and again, they might not have all those best practices yet or lessons learned. And so they're not, they're feeling unsure of themselves. So it might be, you know, helping them along and coaching them to feel more confident in their abilities. It might be they are having a lot of situations where they're intending to be seen and heard one way, yet the people around them are perceiving them a different way or they're perceiving the message differently than how they're intending. And that tends to end in a, in a lot of frustration, conflict type situations. So if they're trying to do the change management or buy-in and people are getting um, upset and there's a lot of, uh, just frustration that's occurring. Then the coaching is more around how they're messaging, you know, body language, tone, um, and making sure that what they're communicating is, is it's being perceived the way they're intending. Because a lot of sometimes there's a gap there. So I'd say that's another area that I tend to see in the coaching clients. And then the third area I would say is when they're getting emotionally triggered from a situation. And I know you know about emotional triggers. <laughs> <laughs> I know very well about emotional trigger. But you, you, and, you and me both <laughs> I have personal experience with them. So unfortunately, when one gets emotionally triggered, right, logic goes right out the window, right? They are in that emotional brain and reactions. And that's more, you know, for those who might not be familiar with what emotional triggering is, when you are much more upset at the situation in front of you than the situation in front of you warrants, that's a red flag that this is an emotional trigger 
and your what's coming out as a reaction from you is actually more than just the situation in front of you it's triggered something from your past that's reminding you of something from your past and so that emotion that's coming out is about your past as well as the situation in front of you so sometimes it's coaching them to understand okay let's process that right what's the emotion you're feeling let's peel that back to what are the thoughts going through your head that's triggering you to feel that way because a lot of times when someone's emotionally triggered they're unconscious of the thought that's triggering that emotion and then once those thoughts are clear then we peel that back to what belief is that tied to because the belief again i'm all about root cause so the belief is the root cause whatever the belief is that then creates your thoughts that then creates your feelings, that then creates the behaviors. So if we can peel it back to the belief and really look at that belief and is it a limiting belief, meaning it served you at one time, but now it's limiting you from what you need to be able to achieve, or is it you know realistic or whatever, really peeling back that layer and going, all right, is this really what you wanna believe or do you wanna shift that belief and start shifting the downstream feelings, thoughts, behaviors? So I'd say those are the three areas that that uh, come up quite a bit with the clients. I and then I kind of kind of want to uh, go back to what you said in the beginning, describing your journey. You started out as a consultant, and that was the main aspects of your your work. Your life was evolving around it, and later on, coaching came about. And you know, just from since I work, I've worked in an, a large organization, a corporate organization, corporate run type of uh, organization, I can speak from my personal um, experience where we have these consultant who comes in and do evaluation annually, regularly uh, throughout the course of the year. Their consultants are great. They come in and identif identify all the problems. They provide you with solution, with suggestion to improve, but you know, there's always that internal emotional uh, believe aspect, which they pack up and they walk away and you leave the organization with huge bum drop and you unleash so much of that frustration and emotion. And that's it for consultant. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it depends on the consultants that you've hired, right? Some of them, like the firm I worked for, we were on the hook for the implementation as well. So we weren't able to leave when we did the bomb drop. <laughs> we had to deal with that aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we we at least, uh, you know, had some skills around that. That being said, like I said in the beginning, we weren't being trained how to overcome those blocks, though. Once once that block was identified, we could get to that point, but then we weren't being trained how to get over that block with the executive or leader. So that coaching piece really, really can be a, a game changer and an up leveler for a consultant. And, and it's a completely different experience uh, knowing that, you know, this is how consultant operate and this is how coach operate. And by combining the two, it's like really powerful too. I remember the latest, the last um, consultant visit that we had from a company. And I was sitting there with the, with the consultant. And at that time, I was already certified as a coach with the energy leadership. And so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, you're going to come in here and you're going to drop a bomb, but you're not telling people what they, what to do, how to handle their emotion. Look at all these people that you have triggered inside the meeting room and people are pissed. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You gotta yes. do something about it. And, and no, it, it's not their responsibility. It's not their job description to, to resolve or having a reconciliation of the root problem. <laughs> It depends on the scope of the consultant. If change management is in the scope of the consultant, then they have to deal with that because that is part of change management is getting people through that emotional change journey. Because I know uh, you and I have talked before about that emotional roller coaster of change, right? So change is emotion. That is absolutely what is going to take place whenever you do a change. So change management is having to deal with that and anticipating that and how to help people through that journey. So if that's in scope of the consultant, then yes. But if it's not, 
it's exactly what you're describing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now that you have both skills and you have two aspects, uh, both aspects of your business, what plans do you have for the future? 2020 is all about change. <laughs> oh my gosh. 2020 is the year of change. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so a few things. So one, uh, I have a monthly change agent community call that I'll be continuing. That's free to change agents. So they are welcome to join me there. And we cover a different topic each month that the uh, prior session is where we select the topic for the next month. And it's different issues that change agents come up against. And so it's a place where they can come, share their struggles, get, you know, get some coaching, get some help around that, hear how other people have resolve that issue or dealt with that issue as a change agent as well. And it allows them to network a little bit with change agents across different industries. So that's something that's that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be continuing doing the change agent coaching and the consulting piece. And on the coaching side, uh, so people are always welcome to reach out for a complimentary session. They can go to sustainablesolutionscoach.com. There is a contact section there. And if they want to sign up for the change agent community call, they go to the events section and they can register there. At some point when I can free up the bandwidth, I'll be doing a webinar on pillar stressors and, and some further recommendations around that. And if we have time today, I can talk a little bit about those recommendations. And then at some point down, down the road, uh, I will be writing a book about my full journey. So what we talked about today is just a part of it. And uh, there has been a tremendous amount of change that has occurred to me in my personal and professional life. So there's there's quite a bit to tell there. I can't wait to read your book. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's going to be a really exciting one just from, you know, uh, monthly calls and, you know, I get I get messages sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Um, can you, you can you tell our viewer again um, where to find you? Yes, so sustainable solutions with an S coach.com. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Roseanne. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, I'm sure we can talk, you know, hours about <laughs> the change agent and working with change agent. There's so much of emotional trigger I can share with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody has their emotional triggers. It's part of being human. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, to, yeah, go ahead. and just to so to to give people hope it is possible to deprogram them so it's not that you are stuck with them it is human to have them and it is possible to deprogram them yeah that's that's exactly my my i was gonna ask you you know if like for those of us who's stuck and we kind of have just have to suck it up and deal with the situation right now <laughs> what would be the what would be your your um your word of advice. Yeah, so on an emotional trigger. So the first thing is to bring to your awareness that you are being emotionally triggered. So a lot of times when this first starts happening, people are unconscious that they're even being emotionally triggered in their minds. What's happening in front of them is what's upsetting them. And this is the only thing behind it, which is understandable. It's kind of where we all start. So the first thing is to identify when your reaction is disproportionately larger than the situation in front of you. And people will tell you around you if that's if you're doing that. So if you're hearing that, that's kind of the first thing to raise your awareness around that. The second thing is to start journaling on it. And what I mean by that is, OK, this is the situation that happened. Now let me start journaling that once you've got that journaled out, start writing about what are the thoughts that are running through my head about this right now? What am I telling myself about this situation, right? That'll give you insight into your thinking. Now, if you can do it yourself, looking at that, you may be able to identify the belief that's behind that thinking. If you're not able to from the journaling, that's where you can then reach out to a, a coach, you can reach out to a therapist and they will help you 
peel back the layers to identify the belief that's triggering that. And then the also the other thing around the journaling is you can start asking yourself how I'm feeling right now in this situation in front of me, what does this remind me of from my past? That's gonna start helping you identify where this trigger may have been programmed in to begin with and start help you understand if there's been a pattern of this particular situation in your life as that each time it happens, it's building up the emotional, uh, it's like a dam. You're building up all that emotion behind it because each time you're adding emotion every time it happens. So it's really raising your awareness and you can try and do that by yourself with the journaling aspect or that's where a coach or therapist can come in and help you unpack this as well. Once you're clear on the belief, the thinking, where this is coming from, then it's going, okay, what do I want to believe going forward? What do I want to be thinking going forward? Is this belief and thinking still serving me or is it time to shift it to something that will serve me? Then it's the work to start doing that. And it's releasing the emotion that you've built up over the years. And you can look into resentment release or release resentment work that will help you clear that emotion. Because if that emotion isn't cleared, it's gonna be very hard to shift the belief and shift the behavior. So it's important to clear that out as well. And then it's with anything practice, right? And you might not get it right the first time, you might not get it right the second time, but the more you focus on it, the more you practice it, you will shift it. It just takes some time sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And if anyone wants to reach out to Roseanne, she, you can find her at sustainablesolutionscoach.com. You got it. Yay. I, I think right now, a lot of people are good. There's, um, nowadays, I like to classify people into two types. <laughs> so the first type, <laughs> the first type is those who already lost our job. And we're in a place where we're stuck. We're looking for a way out. So emotionally, yeah. we can be triggered by many things that's happening around us. And the other type is those who have been wanting to quit the job and moving on to something else or wanting to get out of, of an organization or company. But now you're stuck because you can't go anywhere else. Any, any small move can actually lead to something bigger that you might lose. So those are the two types of people that I am I'm noticing right now. And I'm type two. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the type two, right, there's how true is that? Because on the other hand, I hear organizations talking about they're having trouble hiring people because people are so scared to move from their current organization, right? People are understandably looking for that stability given it's been a year of instability, very understandable. And companies and organizations do still have resource needs. You know, not all companies, but some do. And so for them, they're dealing with resources going, I don't wanna move, but they're like, but I need a resource. So. You know, it's how true is it that there isn't opportunities out there? Well, that, that may or may not be true, depending on your industry, depending on your role. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's peeling that back and seeing how true is it. Mm -hmm. and, and one safety net that we, I, I can leave with people is that always plan ahead, right? So if you think you've been thinking about leaving or stepping away from that particular organization or job, then what has been your backup strategy? What has been your backup plan so that in case the worst do happen, you fall onto a safety net? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So risk management is what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Thank you so much for that too, for coming on to the show. I know we, uh, I held you hostage for another uh, extra 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, all good. All good. I'm, I'm happy to speak about this area. So thank you for having me.
<laughs> and again, everybody, so um, this live coffee talk show is air every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific time. This is where I bring you love, courage, and connection. And again, if you'd like to reach out to Roseanne today, you can re find her at sustainablesolutions.com and reach out to her. She has a monthly uh, group that's going. It's been amazing. It's been great. Um, I get her newsletter all the time, so make sure you follow her. Yep, and just to clarify on the last, it's sustainablesolutionscoach.com. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I will have all that information in the episode notes so that you guys can follow her. All right. Thanks, Michelle. Absolutely. Bye. Stay well.